What's up? Welcome back to How to Play Dark Souls. Today I'm going to take it a little easy and um, I'm actually going to introduce you to a lot of the NPCs in the game. Um, and also introduce you to covenants and show you how they work. So let's go up here first and talk to this guy. Right up here. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thoroughland. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. So, with a lot of these NPCs, it's not immediately clear, like, what you're supposed to do. You have to talk to them a couple of times before they'll actually, like, offer you the services that are available through them. Take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. Oh my, you again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Go ahead and say yes to this. Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. All right, so now to explain how covenants work. Basically, covenants are like different factions or guilds, so to speak, within the game. And uh, there are nine different ones throughout the game. And this, hopefully this uh, photo that you're looking at here will help you kind of understand like what the covenants are all about. So um, the reason that you would want to join a covenant is because um, in, in when you're in a covenant, you can basically rank up by offering certain things um, like the sun medals in the warrior of sunlight uh, covenant. And you offer those to the covenant leader or at a specific altar in the game. And that helps you to rank up within the covenant. Sometimes you need to offer humanity. There are a number of different things you have to offer to the covenant and by doing so, you rank up in the Covenant. And as you rank up in the Covenant, you are given in return um, specific spells or um, weapons or items that you can't acquire any other way in the game. So within the Way of White Covenant, there are specific miracles, which are um, basically like white magic, so to speak, in the game, that you can only get through ranking all the way up within the Way of White Covenant. And the same goes for, for all of these covenants. Within each one of these covenants, um, there are specific things you can only get by ranking up to the top of the covenant. If you're going for a 100% run of the game, you're going to need to do this in every covenant in order to get basically all the achievements. I have done this on my PlayStation 3 uh, run of the game where I've gotten the Platinum Trophy and done everything. I'm not going to be doing that on this playthrough, so I'm only going to be joining the covenants that are necessary for me to get the items that I really need for the, the specific build that I'm going for. Um, so if you have any questions about covenants specifically, go ahead and ask in the comments, and I'll try to answer them that way. But in order to save time on the video, I think that's a good enough explanation for now of what covenants are and how they work. Okay, so I'm not going to join this covenant, the Way of White Covenant, on this run through. But if you would like to, all you need to do is talk to uh, Petros, Petrus, whatever his name is. There's also this guy down here by the uh, by the bonfire here in Firelink Shrine. He's not really anybody. He's just kind of a downer of a guy. He's really negative and kind of uh, mocks you for the most part. But uh, if you talk to him all the way through all of his dialogue, eventually you can fight that character later on in the game. Now I'm going to head back um, to a bonfire I visited earlier, but in case you don't remember how to get there, I'll go ahead and fast forward so that you guys can, can see the path. But I'm going to go and introduce you to Andre of Astora. Now he's a blacksmith. 
and he's right down these stairs. This is a very important NPC. Very, very important. Well, you must be a new arrival. I'm Andre of a store app. If you require smithing, then speak to me. So this is where you can modify your equipment and reinforce it and make it freaking awesome. He does all kinds of things. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about these first. You can learn gestures from a lot of the different uh, NPCs in the game so that you can, you know, do those little gesture emoticon things by pressing the select button. At the moment, I can't uh, modify any equipment, but I can reinforce equipment with Titanite shards. I talked about this a very little bit in the past, but you use Titanite shards to basically strengthen your weapons. So I can take my sword, the Uchi Katana, and I can make it an Uchi Katana plus one and it'll make it slightly stronger. It'll take it from 90, uh, you know, 90 damage, not 90 damage, but 90 strength to 99. And uh, you can upgrade them all the way to plus five right now. I can't go any higher than that right now because I need to bring an ember back to Andre in order for him to do that. Embers uh, basically help you strengthen the weapons in various different ways. At this point in time, I'm not gonna talk about it extensively, um, I'll kind of talk about it as I return to him with these embers that you find throughout the game. Um, by the way, buy this weapon uh, smith box and the armor smith box. This makes it so that you can actually forge your weapons and enhance them and strengthen them any at any bonfire. So I suggest you buy those. Also, this crest of Artorias, we want to get this. So make sure you start saving your souls now to come back and buy this. It's 20,000 souls. Anyway, um... You can basically uh, in, imbue your, your weapons with like divine power or um, all kinds of different powers, but you need to bring the embers back to Andre in order for him to do that. And the embers are kind of hidden in various places throughout the game. So I'm going to go ahead and strengthen my uh, Uchi Katana um, as far as I can. I think I could probably buy two more Titanite shards and then strengthen it to a plus four. And that will make it so that I'm doing... Uh, a little bit more damage than I was doing before, which is nice. And there we go. So I need three more Titanite shards to upgrade it to level five, and then that'll be as high as I can go with that sword for now. But it, but I just went from uh, 90 uh, strength with the sword to 126, so it's it's a pretty significant jump there. All right, I'm going to fast forward just in case you guys don't remember how to get to the uh, the bell tower, but that's where we're going next to meet the next NPC. This is where we fought the uh, the gargoyles on top of the roof of this cathedral here. Now you go in here, and you can meet Kareem. Now Kareem's a pretty important character. Um, basically, in the game, when you join a covenant, um, there are there are ways to basically betray the covenant. One of those is to attack an NPC that's associated with that covenant or that guild. And if you end up betraying a covenant that you join. Um, that's a sin in the game, and then those NPCs will become hostile towards you every time you go back to that area. And you can, through Kareem, basically request absolution, where he can forgive you those sins, and then those NPCs will no longer be hostile towards you. Um, you'll have to go back and then become part of the Covenant again if you want to do that, but um, at least they won't be hostile towards you. Um, you can also abandon Covenants with uh, Kareem here, and that won't be um, a sin. Anyways, um, indictments. Indictments are kind of interesting <clears throat> because if, if a player invades you and, you know, they behave in a way that's, I don't know, they're being jerks to you or, or whatever, um, y you feel like you want to report them, you basically use an indictment. And what that will do is it will alert members of the Blade of the Dark Moon Covenant. It will make it'll make those players eligible to invade that person who invaded you. So if you have an indictment against you, basically these Blade of the Dark Moon 
uh, players are going to come after you to kill you in your game. So it's it's pretty interesting. It's not a game changer. It's not really all that necessary. I never really bothered using indictments. I've never been indicted. So if you've had experience with that, if any of you who are watching this have had experience with indictments and how they work, uh, maybe you can explain in the uh, your experience with that in the comments. But I haven't really had much experience with it. Um, so, but that's that's how indictments work. All right, back at Firelink Shrine here. I probably could have done this last time I was here, but I didn't. Uh, let's go down the stairs here, and uh, Latrec is here. We this is the guy that we rescued from the prison back in the uh, back at the uh, the cathedral, the bell tower, cathedral. Anyways, he gives you, in return for freeing him, Not enough. a Sunlight Medal, which you can use well, if you decided to join the uh, Warrior of Sunlight Covenant to advance within that covenant. I'm not going to be joining that covenant on this playthrough, but um, there's some pretty sweet rewards for, for being in that covenant. Now, this NPC is the Firekeeper. Remember the Firekeeper soul that we got earlier? We want to use that here to reinforce our Estus Flask. What that's going to do is you'll see down in the bottom left corner, the Estus Flask will become an Estus Flask plus one. And now when you use an Estus, uh, when you drink Estus, it will heal a little bit more than it used to. You can enforce the Estus Flask up to plus five, if I'm remembering correctly. I might be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure plus five is as high as it goes. So you get Firekeeper Souls in the game, and you take them to the, the Firekeeper there, and she can basically make it so that Estes will heal you even more. Um, while we're talking about uh, Firekeeper Souls, I'm going to go get another one. But I'm not going to use it right now. I'm going to keep it for a little bit. Um, but you could actually come and get this as early as you want in the game and use it. And if you're having trouble during the early parts of the game, you can get an Estes Flask plus one really early on. Now... Um, my frame rate's dropping. There we go. Sorry, I had to change some settings. Okay, you can come and get this very early on in the game. Let's go talk to this NPC first, though, before I go get the uh, Firekeeper Soul. There's one NPC down here that we can talk to. Hmm? Well, this is unusual. You haven't lost your head. And more importantly, you're free. How on earth? Well, I shouldn't pry. I'm Ricky of Vinheim. I was once an established smith. Look at me now. Can you believe it? Okay, so let's try and talk to him again. There we go. What is it? Have you? Oh no. Don't worry. I've no intention of escape. It's safe here. I can't bear the thought of going hollow out there. Although, I must admit, I've not much to occupy myself. How about this? I could forge your weapons, albeit with rather minimal tools. I'll show you what made me the best in Vinai. Okay. So uh, this guy can actually forge your equipment to have uh, magical properties. Um, none of the, uh, the equipment I have now is uh, available for that. Um, but you can also uh, purchase spells from this guy. Spells, rings, and other magic accessories. I don't suggest doing it right now, uh, even if you're planning on going for a magic build, because there's a guy we're going to rescue here, probably in the next episode, who can sell you all of this and more. Uh, way better stuff. So, I uh, just thought I'd show you that he's here, but um, there's another guy later on who you probably want to wait to buy magic from. Anyways, uh, I am going to die at this part, and that's okay. Uh, it's kind of given. Um, there are these ghosts in this area that are basically invincible unless you use an item called the Transient Curse on yourself. You can't attack them. You can do no damage to them at all. Um, on this dead body here, you can pick up Transient Curses and use them, but I'm going to save them for later because I'm not going to be you know, going through this area at this time. Right now, I just am coming for the Firekeeper soul. So, even though I have 7 humanity and, I don't know, 4,000 souls, 
I'm not terribly worried about that. Uh, you can always find more humanity and more souls in the game. Um, this is definitely not something that's like going to be a tragedy to lose. But basically, you want to go straight through here. Be careful, don't fall off either side. There's kind of a thin bridge through this water here, but pick up the Firekeeper Soul. And by the time you do that, you're going to be surrounded by these ghosts. There's really not a good way of getting out of here. Um, you're going to die if you do this. But it's worth it if you're very early on in the game um, and you want to uh, boost your Estus Flask so that it can heal you uh, even more. So that's an option that's available to you, but I want to hold on to this Firekeeper Soul specifically uh, for a reason that I'm not going to spoil at this time. Anyways, I think that's good for today. Let me know if you have any more questions about Dark Souls. Thanks for watching, and PEACE!